So it's a very exciting time because there's a lot of new CSS that's going to change the way that we do page layout on the web. I've made up this official timeline of web page layout. You can kind of see the evolution. I think we're headed towards a kitten unicorn era of page layout. But of course, the first thing everybody wants to know is what are we going to do about the older browsers? I can't use this new technology because of IE or because of other kinds of things. I think we get stuck with this idea that we're not allowed to use something until it's fully supported in every browser because we have this mythology that new code, new CSS, new other kinds of features, they either work or they don't work. And you can either use them or not use them. And those four choices make up this kind of matrix where I don't have control as a person making a website about whether or not the new feature works in my user's browser. I do have control about whether or not I use it. And I want to use it when it works, but if it doesn't work, then I can't use it. If I use it anyway, I'm gonna get fired or I'm gonna get covered in bugs and that's not gonna work. So my only choice is to not use it because it doesn't work and wait until 100% of our users have this new thing in their browser. Or what, I don't know, lots of times people, companies will wait until 92%, 97%, 95%. You have this debate about what percent is acceptable to ignore. I think we need to support every single solitary person and every single solitary device. You want 100% coverage, but you also don't want to wait 10 years to get to use a new thing. I don't think the problem is that things don't work in certain browsers. I think the problem is that we have this idea that the whole thing works like this matrix and it doesn't work like this matrix. This is more what we actually have, which is you can use it and not use it at the same time because it works and it doesn't work at the same time. We don't just have to live with not using it until it's 100% covered. We've The kitten unicorn lives in this box, the box where we get to use it and not use it at the same time. It's quantum CSS. It's magic. So how come it works this way? Uh, it's because this is the way that the web was invented from the very, very, very beginning. Back when Tim Berners-Lee was at CERN, CERN is a big scientific organization where people come from all over the world and they had different kinds of computers. It was the 80s. Who knows what kind of computers people were using? Those computers did not really use the same protocols. They didn't really have many ways to talk to each other. People were using different kinds of software, different sorts of techniques, different kinds of ways of organizing their stuff. and. Tim Berners-Lee knew that if he was going to succeed in creating a system for putting all of these documents in a place where everyone could access everyone else's information, that he would need to invent a system that would work no matter what kind of computer people were using, no matter what software people had, no matter how old their machine was. And so he knew that he had to figure that out. He knew that that was going to be a big deal. In fact, he said, I would have to create a system with common rules that would be acceptable to everyone. This meant as close as possible to no rules at all. This notion seemed impossible until I realized that the diversity of different computer systems and networks could be a rich resource, something to be represented, and not a problem to be eradicated. This is the very first web browser. It only ran on the next computer. Tim Berners-Lee and Robert Caillou used the next computer to invent the web. Here it is, but it wasn't going to be any good if it only worked on next computers. The second web browser that they made ran on this IBM computer on the command line, which is crazy. We think of the web as being all graphics today, but they knew that most of the computers that people had were these 1980s command line computers, so they wanted the web to work on as many computers as possible, and they made the line mode browser. You can go play with it today, actually, at this URL, and see what it was like. You click it, and it goes to another web page. You click a number to match the link you want to go to, and it goes to another web page. Totally different way of surfing the web. Totally worked because you got to the content that you needed, you got to be able to accomplish what it was you wanted to accomplish. And then this is the Mosaic browser, sort of the first browser that's a lot like the browsers that we use today, graphical user interface browser. But the web has always been about 
having browsers on different kinds of devices, having browsers that run websites that work anywhere. It's very different than other kinds of software that your team or your companies might be making these days, or the kinds of software we use as a, as a consumer. If you go to the Google Play Store and you want to download an Android app, it will say right there, requires Android 2.3 and up. Or you go to the iOS store and it says, requires iOS 8 or later. Um, you might have a Microsoft Word document from 1997 and it doesn't get work in the 2017 version of Microsoft Office. That's kind of the world that we're used to uh, off the web where the Mac version of the software only works on Macs. It's not going to work on Windows. You, you, every piece of software has a minimum requirement to where it's actually going to work. Um, and I think lots of times engineers come over with that kind of idea that that's how the web works. That at some point you just say, this website no longer works with these particular browsers. This only works on Internet Explorer 11 and above. It doesn't work on Internet Explorer 10. This only works if you have a screen that's at least 800 pixels wide. It doesn't work on screens that are smaller than that. This website only works if, this, if you have a certain network connection speed. If you have a slower network connection, it's not going to work for you. Or this website only works if you can see the screen. If for some reason, all the way from your blind to your driving, you can't see the screen, then this website's not going to work for you, right? Like we bring that mentality over from software engineering, but the web is very different. The web was architected from the very beginning to work no matter what kind of computer you have, no matter what kind of output device or screen or screen reader you might be using, no matter what kind of input device you might be using, whether you're using a keyboard and a mouse and a trackpad, or maybe you only have one of those, or maybe you have none of those. Whether you have a fast internet connection, a slow internet connection, a modern computer, or an old computer, no matter which operating system you're using, no matter what level your browser is at, the web is going to work no matter what. So as people who make websites, we want to honor that. We want to make websites in that fashion. Sometimes people think that that means it's going to be very hard. They have to make two or three different websites. They have to make the mobile website and the desktop website. They have to make the website that uses CSS Grid and the website that doesn't have CSS Grid. It's going to be twice as much work. It really doesn't work that way. If you use progressive enhancement, you can stack up your code in such a way that it always works no matter the conditions. It's not twice as hard. It's just how to write good code for the web. That way the website works no matter what the screen size is. That way the website works even if you don't have CSS. And you might think, well, who doesn't have CSS? Well, you know what? Anyone who pushes that little reader mode button or uses a program like Instapaper, it's pocket, you're somehow stripping off all the CSS there might be a huge percentage of your users who are using those reader mode, um, reading better experiences, and you just don't know it because you know Google Analytics doesn't tell you that. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got good HTML, we've got good CSS, we're using JavaScript for the stuff that JavaScript's really good at, and we're not using JavaScript for everything. Um, and so I'm, in the next several videos, I'm going to show you exactly how to write CSS so that it works no matter what. It works even when you've used new features uh, and it gets served to browsers that don't know what those features are. It's not hard. You just have to know how to do it. And once you do, you can write CSS using all of the brand new stuff. It's not twice as hard. And your, uh, everyone will get an experience, not the same experience, identically across all devices and browsers and sizes and stuff. But everyone will get something that works. Everybody will be happy, um, including you.